Did you know today, tonight was Mardi Gras? This is the biggest day of the year for plastic penis whistles with glitter on them, hands down. <laughs> Mardi Gras translates from French to Fat Tuesday. Today's Fat Tuesday. Next week is Super Tuesday. And then the week after that, Super Fat Taco Tuesday. So <laughs> we have a lot to look forward to. The Dem Democrats are squabbling again in Charleston tonight. This is debate number 10 for the Democrats. And one of the big questions going into this was how Mike Bloomberg would respond to his poor showing at the debate last week. So far, Bloomberg spent about $500 million to get smacked around by Elizabeth Warren on television. <laughs> His primary goal, and the goal of all the candidates tonight, was to try to knock off the number one guy, Bernie Sanders. Bernie, as you know, has a lot of plans, expensive plans, but he's smart. He's no dummy. Every time one of the other candidates asks who's going to pay for these programs, he just point to Bloomberg and says, him. <laughs> Meanwhile, President Trump is on his way back home from India, where he was well buttered by their prime minister, <laughs> who... They had a big public event to welcome Trump, and that pleased our leader, who, and this is going to surprise you, believes the reception he got was like nothing the Indian people had ever given before. They say in the history of India, which has a long history and a, a brilliant history in so many different ways, there's never been a reception given to somebody like was given, and I would like to say for the United States of America, but nobody else that came here got the kind of reception we got. <laughs> Of course, he got a big reception. They love cows in India. <laughs> they, uh, they're sacred. Yeah. Trump went on to overestimate the size of the crowd. Even though there were thousands of empty seats in the stadium while he was speaking, and people were leaving while he was speaking, the Donald brain translated that to mean there were fans lined up outside waiting to get in. It was 125,000, I think, seats they had yesterday. They were full. You had thousands and thousands of people outside. Uh, Prime Minister Modi was telling me thousands of people outside. That's not uncommon for me, to be honest. They've never seen anything like it. <laughs> Somebody said it was the greatest greeting ever given to any head of state from any country. <laughs> <laughs> who, who's, who said that? Who was that? Was that someone in a mirror and looks just like you? <laughs> And when he was done bragging about the size of his crowd, he took some time to talk about ISIS. Well, I don't think anybody's done more than I have, if you look, because I came in, and if you uh, check your maps and look at Iraq and Syria, it was all over. In fact, they had it painted a certain color. I won't tell you what color, because it doesn't matter. <laughs> Somebody would say it was a Republican color, so I don't want to get people confused. But it was, it happened to be red. <laughs> he must be great with surprises. Baron, I know it's your birthday tomorrow, and I don't want to say we're throwing you a party, but we're throwing you a party. <laughs> Melania made the bee best of her trip to India. The First Lady took part today in what they call a happiness class in New Delhi, and that's interesting that she did that, because what in the world would make Melania think she might need a hap... Oh, wait. <laughs> yes, that, right. <laughs> Melania doesn't need a happiness class. She needs an escape plan and a grappling hook. <laughs> we, learned, we did learn some interesting things about Donald Trump's health today. As the former White House doctor, Ronnie Jackson, told the New York Times that he regrets not being able to do more to improve the president's diet and exercise, Jackson also revealed some of the creative strategies they used on Trump to try to keep him healthy. Now, before I show this, keep in mind, this is a real quote from a man who was the actual doctor for the actual president of the United States, all right? We were working on his diet. We were making the ice cream less accessible. <laughs> we were putting cauliflower into the mashed potato. <laughs> that is what we do with our five-year-old at home. It's... Imagine having to sneak cauliflower into the president's mashed potatoes and hide the ice cream as if you're camping and you don't want to get bears in the camp. Trump this morning weighed in on Dr. Jackson's claim. He defended himself, tweeting, it was a perfect cauliflower. <laughs> and another medical news, the stock market was down a lot again today, in part because of the coronavirus, which is spreading. In fact, three people in our theater... Ha no, just kidding. Uh, but... <laughs> you know, this morning, the president tweeted that the coronavirus is very much under control in the USA, which means we're in a lot of trouble, but... <laughs> I mean, we just found out they had to trick him into eating vegetables. Do we really think he has a handle on the coronavirus? 
And by the way, have you seen the coronavirus? I mean, like the microscopic, I Googled it today, and I don't know what I was expecting, but I was kind of surprised because it's, it, it looks more like a homemade Christmas ornament on Etsy. <laughs> <laughs> that charming little bauble is trying to kill us. So one person who is not concerned about the coronavirus is recent Presidential Medal of Freedom winner Rush Limbaugh. The coronavirus being weaponized as yet another element to bring down Donald Trump. Now, I want to tell you the truth about the coronavirus. What, you, 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 you think I'm wrong about this? You think I'm missing it by saying it's... <laughs> Yeah, I'm dead right on this. The coronavirus is, is, is the common cold. <laughs> what? Oh, well, that's great news. Just chug a little bit of Robitussin and you'll be fine. It doesn't seem like a cold in China where health officials and even police are working around the clock to try to contain it. This is, this is a real coronavirus drill from China. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? When the SWAT team can't get the job done, send in the guy with the pool skimmer. <laughs> How does it's not even I'm starting to I think I know why it's starting to spread. And while there may not be a vaccine for the coronavirus, uh, disgraced cell evangelist Jim Baker appears to have the next best thing for the low, low price of only 125 bucks. This influenza that is now circling the globe, you're saying that silver solution would be effective. Well, let's say it hasn't been tested on this strain of the coronavirus, but it's been tested on other strains yeah. of the coronavirus and has been uh, able to eliminate it within 12 hours. Yeah. Totally yeah. eliminate it, kills it, and deactivates it. Yeah. And then it boosts your immune system, so then you can support the recovery, because when you kill the virus, then the immune system comes into action to clear it out. So you want a vibrant immune system as yeah. well as an ability to deactivate these viruses. That's Whoa. so good. Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> that, that product is about as real as Harvey Weinstein's walker. <laughs> Silver solution. It's like a, a TV show about a... Old ladies who solve mysteries. This Jim Baker, by the way, is quite the character. I don't even remember him. How this guy came back after pocketing all that money from his church really is a miracle. But you know what? He prayed his way through. This is a very prayerful man. This is a man who even prays about what he wears. To get dressed and, and God, I pray about what I wear. I really do. I know I look stupid sometimes. <laughs> but I, the last time God told me to wear a color was red. Right, I remember. And what happened that day? The stock market crashed a few Boy, days ago. That oh, that's right. Red. Remember that? Yes. Yeah, that was the day he stopped dressing like Spider-Man to work. <laughs> and, but I need to be careful because according to Jim, God is going after anyone who makes fun of him. But one day you're going to shake your fist in God's face. Hmm. And you're going to say, God, why didn't you warn me? And he's going to say, you sat there and you made fun of Jim Baker all those years. <laughs> he is? <laughs> well, pack your bags, Guillermo. I'm going to hell. <laughs> yes, we are. How do you? Well, but by all means, send him money for sure. Thanks for watching. If you liked that video, click the subscribe button. And if you didn't like it, well, you hurt my feelings. <laughs>